Right, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are so lucky to have um, the famous nurseryman William Seabrook here, and he will show us some more details of different varieties and how different they act once they've been grafted. Over to you, William. Right, Dan. Yes, this is important. Don't be deceived or disappointed by this. This is perfectly normal. This variety obviously is a much more vigorous variety uh, and it's always going to be probably the rest of its cropping life. This one is not. Um, Dan reckons this is going to be a spur type uh, due to its sort of bunchy looking appearance. This will continue to grow away um, during the summer. Um, it's not going to be up the height of that one. It, it never in, would intend to be because it's a different variety to that, different habits of growth. So obviously different habits do different things at the end of the day. Now I'm going to take the tape off. This has been on since April. We cut the knot rather than slash up the back of the, the stock because it's more hygienic and uh, nick it with a point and take it away. Now I'll turn the, the pot round so that you can see the callus. There you are, that's off and that is perfectly ah, healthy growth. There we are, there it is in there. That is the cyan, the callus and the, this stock of the sign we put onto this stock in the spring. Bunchy as I said but that still will grow away. The fruit bud forming here already. These would be taken away during the growing season because they're competitive shoots but we'll leave them on for the moment. They can be taken off as one would in the nursery later. This tree here pro uh, grafted exactly the same time. These side shoots here have been left on is quite right this extra leaf will help feed your maiden tree, but they could come off now. This can probably take care of itself uh, from now on, but you can see that they're totally and utterly different. Um, same age exactly. This I think will probably bear a year later than that due to this being more of a spur type and cropping on that, that age of wood. So third summer for this one, first crop, second for that. So there we are, we'll take the tape off this one and see what we've got underneath and I'm quite happy that it's going to be all right. There we are, nick the knot again, dropping by focals, not focusing. There we are, Bit of constriction here, but no harm has been done. That's the wax has gone into the, got into the thing, but we're not going to worry. Cut the knot, not the bark. And there's a lovely clean. I'll hold that one up, probably see it a bit better. There it is. Lovely callus there. Another point is when you tape up or uh, bind the, the scion to this stock, try to keep as few turns as possible because then you can see within about 10 days, particularly if you're budding as opposed to grafting, you can see the baby callus forming um, within sort of 10 days to a fortnight, budding probably a little bit earlier. But uh, the thicker you put the tape on, you won't be able to see through it to see the union. But that's perfect. Now, William, before you um, stop, can you explain, please, to the public, why it is you do not like to slice with a knife and break a wound, a possible wound? Yeah. Because you've said that you'd rather cut the knot. But explain, yeah. please, why. So I will. Um, in the old days, we used to use raffia, or bass, as we called it. Well, that was difficult to cut the knot in that, so we used to slit up the back, literally. But the whoever was doing the operation had to be very careful not to cut into the bark, because as if you do that, as the tree grows, that cut will open, and is a per it's a perfect entry for fungus 
uh, diseases, uh, canker particularly. And some varieties, like Spartan, we were growing a lot of them, was rather canker prone. But nowadays, growing varieties like Gala or Kanzi, which we don't do much, grow much now because of its canker proneness. Gala, fine, we, that's not so bad in that one, but some are bad. That's a wonderful entry for a disease from day one, and you just don't want it there at all if you can possibly help it. So cut the knot and untie the tape. Uh, rather than slash up the back because it's awfully difficult to slash up the back of the rootstock without cutting the rootstock itself leaving that entry point for disease so that's an important one sometimes it's quite a good idea to spray with a fungicide after the tapes have been removed because the bark under the tape is pretty soft and because uh, it's been covered up for well in this case since April we're now into halfway through August, so it's very soft and tender. So a little fungicide, all of private brand fungicide would do. Even the stuff you use for black spotted roses available from the garden centre couldn't do any harm at all. Just a protect, just a precaution. Um, so that's really it. That's why we cut the knot as opposed to cutting up the back through the raffia in the old days or the tape of today. Normally, now, commercial nurseries we use biodegradable tape, so it doesn't have to be cut at all. It stays on and it just breaks down according to the sunlight you have. Normally, um, well, some summers if it's cloudy, it might take a little bit longer to break down, but you haven't got to take it off manually. So that's another job saved and less injury to the, or less possible injury to the tree. Quite unintentional, of course, but something you don't want from day one. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, thank right you. Right, Dan. Thank you.